start? Well, let's start first with your amazing story. I actually was introduced to you um, from Bella, Steak and Butter Gal, um, because I have followed, you know, her story, her content, you know, um, since she be she she started a couple of years ago. And um, I was introduced to you from her and I was amazed by what you had to say. And then of course your story and how you do it all because you have nine kids. Just a few. Yeah, just a few kids. <laughs> I know I only I only have two, and that's enough for me. You know? <laughs> so I can't imagine how you handle it all. Um, and you know, all your health struggles along the way too. So yeah, let's start at the beginning. Um, where did it start for you? with your health journey and how did you find keto and carnivore? Um, so go ahead. All righty. So I have okay. been on the larger side. When I was a uh, senior in high school, I was 175 pounds and I'm five foot eight normally. And that is kind of where I've always been. I think that was the lowest weight that I've been since I was a teenager. So it was always there, but I hit it very well because I, I hold all of my weight in my lower body. So you can't see it as much. And I, at the age of 13 had to go on birth control pills. Mm. And that was because my cycle was such a mess and my hormones were all over the place. And I had developed depression already and was suicidal when I was about 17. So I was on birth control pills and that, that worked for a while until I decided I wanted to have kids. So of course, you know, you kind of have to go off the birth control pills, went off the birth control pills, got pregnant with the first one. Everything was pretty good. I mean, honestly, it was, it was pretty good. And with the second one, I developed some pretty severe postpartum depression I had a really tough time connecting to him, wanting to do anything with either one of my boys at that point in time. So of course, went to the doctor and they said, oh, well, this is, you know, pretty normal. And so we're going to put you on some medications and it's just going to be for a little bit, you know, to get you past this hump. And looking back over my past and my genetics, my mom has always been on medication for depression and anxiety. And I knew that this was the beginning of the end. I was like, I am never going to get off these meds. I just know it. Cause I'm following the same steps and the same path that she did. And so I was just, I just accepted it. This is my genetics. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, it's the bad roll of the dice, it's just the way it is. And for years, I continued to take more and more and more medications adding more because it was never enough. Uh, in some ways I did get better. In some ways I was getting worse, but I didn't realize it. So every time I would go in, you know, to the doctor and fill out that form of, you know, how are you feeling? How many times I went from one to two times a week that I was sad to three to four times a week. And now it's like all seven days progressively watching myself get worse and worse. And then, um, I went through a lot in my life, ended up having a very, very traumatic birth experience with my youngest one. And after that, my meds weren't working anymore. I was completely maxed out on everything. So of course we had to switch the meds because once you run out, you have to do something else. You can't just keep going up. So we switched the meds and that did not go well. At that point in time, I was already gluten-free because I had figured out that it was actually affecting my heart. I got what was akin to AFib, oh. but they couldn't diagnose it as AFib because it just wasn't quite right. But I would skip every other beat and then I would pass out because Pretty beats enough. a minute really isn't enough. <laughs> so I wow. ended up having an ablation, then figured out it was the gluten that was really affecting it. So I'd been I've been gluten-free for about 10 years and we were on our way with my brand new little baby over to the psychiatrist's office for my checkup with my new medications starving. So we drove through, cause it was like a 25, 30 minute drive to the doctor's office, drove through Arby's. I'm already gluten-free. So I ordered just the meat 
no sauce, no bun. We go through the drive through we pull away and I open up my container and you can see the little bread particles on the meat. So I think what they had done is they had taken the sandwich, made the sandwich, went, oh, she can't have this, taken the bun off and then put the meat into the container because you could see the little bread crumbs. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, we're, we're going to be late. We don't have a chance to turn around and go back. So I pick off the bread and I eat it. About 30 minutes later, we're sitting in the psychiatrist's office and just so happens that that's about how long it takes for gluten to give me a massive panic attack whenever I get cross-contamination. So sitting in my psychiatrist's office, I began freaking out and crying and falling apart. And my psychiatrist looks at me and she looks at my husband and she looks down at the baby in the car seat. And she says, how often does this happen? And we tried to explain to her that it's only when I get gluten. And of course she's thinking I'm nuts. So she said, I'll be right back. Leaves the room, comes back in and says, Amy, it looks like you could use a break. And I'm like, well, what mom couldn't use a break, you know, brand new baby, colic, all that. And she says, um, I think you could use a couple of days off. And I'm like, that sounds great, but no mom gets to do that. And she said, well, Actually, the sheriff's deputy is going to be here in about 30 minutes to escort you over 15 minutes to escort you over to the ER. Oh my God. <laughs> she called a suicide watch on me wow. and there was nothing we could do about it. Oh my God. So I now have this 5150 on my record forever. And I was taken away from my family for three days. No, oh, Amy. Wow. And at that point in time, I realized I can't let other people dictate what will happen with me because I was never suicidal, nor was I a danger to my kids. I was sad. Yes. I was very anxious. I was very nervous, but I was never going to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. So to have that placed on me and my freedom taken away from me for my own good quote unquote Mm -hmm. was terrifying. So for three days, I was in this institute where they watched me, gave me my meds. And of course they don't believe in gluten-free over there. Yeah. So, you know, I can barely eat. I filled up on eggs and bacon in the morning. Uh, I was still pretty standard American diet. So I ate, if it was unbreaded chicken, I would eat that. I would eat the rice salad, things like that. Mm -hmm. I managed to do pretty good and got out. And I said, okay, that's enough. I have to find a way to be able to manage my own health and get off these medications. Because if something happens and I can't get my medications, I used to have nightmares that I would go on a trip and I would forget my six bottles of medication. And I would literally wake up in a cold sweat and my heart would be pounding. It was like, this is not okay. Yeah. So I was truly convinced that if I could just lose weight, because by this point in time, I'm almost 275 pounds. I'm convinced that if I could just lose weight, I would be happy. And that's what my problem really has been this whole time because I've been overweight my whole life. So if I could just lose weight, I'll get happy and I can get off my medications. Mm -hmm. I've been resistant to every, I've tried everything except for keto. I've been resistant to keto because that is a fad diet and it's going to pass and it's not going to work. Yeah, so I refused, yeah. I refused to fall for it. I wasn't going to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm standing in line by myself, checking out at Walmart. First time I've gone shopping by myself after getting out of the uh, institution where I was. And I look up and there's this magazine and it says, Keto saves woman's life. And I said, okay, I can take a hint. Fine. Last ditch effort. I'm desperate. So I, you know, kind of started looking into keto a little bit. And after about two weeks of researching, I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. Started on, it was like January 14th. And my husband and I were, we went out to eat, but it was our date night that night. And all day long, I've been on my phone with this app and I've been plugging all my food into this app and we're at dinner and he goes, okay what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm going to try keto. We're going to see what happens. I've been plugging in my food every day. And he goes, okay, you, I'm glad, you know, you know, that's what you're going to do. That works. 
he's like, I, I'm curious though. I want to do it. I want, I want, I want to plug my phone, you know, numbers in, into this app. So what app is it? So I tell him he downloads it and he starts plugging in all of his food and he goes, um, what, what, what are you supposed to be at for carbs? And I said, well, at the time we were doing net carbs, you know, got fooled by that, but yeah, he, uh, I told him 20 net carbs and he goes, so, um, I think I'm going to start tomorrow. And I said, why, what are you at? It was like, 386. Oh, wow. <laughs> Something like that, you know? And so yeah. 12 hours, I had to do it by myself. And then he joined me. So that was, that was really, really nice. Uh, fast forward about six months, I've started losing weight. I've noticed a lot of other really amazing things. And one morning my eyes pop open and I felt something electrically connect inside of my brain. Mm. And I reached over and I shook my husband and I woke him up and I said, "Hun, I think I can come off my medication. And he was like, please, no. <laughs> yes. Been there, done that. And I said, no, there's something truly different. I can feel it. Like I can feel my brain working and clearing out. So he says, you know what? If you really think that you can do that, then let's call call the doctor. Let's call the psychiatrist and ask her, you know, what we have to do and talk to her about it. So I made the mistake of using the four letter word, <laughs> yeah. keto. big mistake. Don't ever say that. So I told her I found keto and I think I can come off my meds. And she got a little upset. She got very frustrated and said that the only way I was ever going to come off of my medication is if I went fully plant-based. Oh gosh. And if I did that and really truly committed, then I could begin weaning off of my medications and explained to me how to do it. Cause it's not just, you know, stop taking them. I was on yeah. some pretty hardcore meds and they can cause physical brain damage if you just end them. Wow. So she, she told me how to do it and told me the only way to do it was, you know, with uh, with plants alone. <laughs> so I told her, thank you so much for letting me know. And I would let her know how it turned out. So over the next, it was supposed to be six months of weaning myself off. It was actually five months. Cause I accidentally spilled the last little bit. I was cutting the pills into quarters, teeny tiny little pills. And I dropped the pill cutter and it hit the bottle and it knocked it down the sink. Whoops. <laughs> did a little bit earlier, but I managed in five months to get off of all of my medications and the freedom that I felt after quitting all of those pills was intoxicating. Mm, okay. And at that moment I knew I was sold. I was never going to go back on medications ever again. About a year into my keto journey, a year and a couple months, we had a tragedy in the family where our 14 year old niece very suddenly passed away. Oh, no. And I've got a 14 year old daughter and a 16 year old stepdaughter at this point in time, plus a bunch of other kids. Yeah. And it hit me really, really hard. And I began to panic a little bit and I felt that anxiety and that fear creeping up. And it was reminiscent of where I had been before I went on medications. And so I panicked. Mm -hmm. And I had heard that carnivore was the ultimate mental health diet. Yeah. And so I decided I was going to go carnivore because I was, I was already pretty close anyways. I'd kind of gotten off a lot of the veggies and reduced a bunch of them because they weren't making me feel good. Gotten rid of all the almond flour, everything, and slowly weaned myself off all of them doing the complete opposite of what my psychiatrist had suggested. <laughs> yeah. And I had heard from several sources that the only way to truly heal your body was to go grass fed, grass finished, only beef with organ meats and unsalted Kerrygold butter. Mm. So I decided that that was the form of carnivore I was going to do. And I switched from commercial 
beef that I've been getting from the grocery store, along with chicken and pork and eggs and cheese and everything else to just grass fed, grass finished beef with organ meats mixed in and unsalted Kerrygold butter. And for about four and a half months, that's all I ate. Wow. I was not listening to my body. I was not paying attention to the feedback that my body was attempting to give me. I was down to about 500 calories a day. I could no longer chew my food because if I were to chew and swallow my esophagus, my throat would physically close off Mm -hmm. and the food would attempt to come out my nose because it, it refused to let me eat anymore. And yet I was convinced that this was the way to do it because someone said it has to be this way for you to be able to heal. And one morning I'm standing at the counter trying to swallow my frozen chunks of food with water because this is the only way I can get in even 500 calories a day. And my husband comes in and he goes, that's enough. He's like, you're terrifying me. Because you don't see it, but you're starting to slide back down again. Mm -hmm. It's a different way. He's like, but this is not you. He's like, what sounds good? And I started crying and I said, eggs and regular butter with cheese. And he goes, how many eggs? Six, a dozen, two dozen. (laughs) He goes, I don't care what it is. Eat something. So I made myself, it was four eggs regular butter. And I think I put some cheese on top of it. Mm -hmm. And within 20 minutes, I felt my brain open back up again. I was actually able to swallow the food. I was able to enjoy it. I finally felt a little bit of energy and a little bit of peace come back. And at that moment, I realized I have to stop listening to everybody else. Yes. (laughs) I have to find what's going to work for me because obviously what everyone else says is going to work doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And there began my journey about a year and a half into my low carb was my journey of finding what's going to work for me, Mm -hmm. trying different things and beginning to discover what my body can handle because I, I realized even though we are all humans, mm-hmm. we're very different in our life experiences, the medications that we've taken, the infections, the diseases that we have had. This is why even standard American diet people who a family can eat the same thing every single day, day in, day out. Mm-hmm. And yet the mom ends up with diabetes The dad ends up with cancer. Mm -hmm. The children end up with ADHD. They all end up with different problems, even though they're eating the exact same thing. So it makes sense that even if I'm eating exactly what some carnivore tells me to eat or some low carb person, I'm not getting the same results as them as unfair as that is. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the truth. So my quest and my passion has become It depends. There is no one size fits all and you're not alone. Uh, A sweet friend of mine, Emily Penton from Carnivore Minds and Inner Clarity Systems, she did a poll with her people and she said, you know, did you get the results that you wanted from Carnivore? 80% came back and said no. Yes. And I was one of them. (laughs) Exactly. I I have gotten all of the health benefits. Yes. But in the beginning, I was doing exactly what you just talked about. I was following all these people. I was trying all the different methods, high fat, low fat, salt, electrolyte. You know, you have to find what works for you. But I did gain 20 pounds. And everyone else is losing weight. Um, And granted, I came from pretty much almost carnivore anyway, like you, like you, you know, I'd gone down that road. But yeah, we have to listen to our bodies. We are all different, right? A hundred percent. And that's why I created my Facebook group. 
and my mighty network. And I'm, I'm the pretty strict mom. I've got nine kids. I don't deal with crap. I don't accept it. I do not accept it from children. And I certainly don't from adults either. (laughs) So I have kicked several people out because they come in and they presume to tell people what they should do. Oh, okay. And I'm like, but that didn't work for that person. It didn't work for me. I've been Mm -hmm. called a joke in my own groups. They left very quickly. They, they, I hope that the door didn't hit them on the way out, but I want to create a place where I don't care what you're doing. As long as you are getting the results that you are looking for. I don't care if you're super strict, all in carnivore beef only and salt and -hmm. water. I love you. I don't care if you are plant heavy. I don't, I don't care as long as you are getting what you are looking for and you do not force it on anyone else and you do not shame anyone else. Those are my requirements for being in my group. I love that. I, and I'm in your group too. Um, (laughs) and I love how your group just, you know, doesn't judge Mm -hmm. and we're all doing different things in there. Um, and it's so supportive and, and you just have an amazing supportive community. And that's one of the comments that I see frequently is that they just, they're so grateful for a place that they can be honest and open with what they're doing. A bunch of them have said, I've never said this publicly before, but this is what I struggle with because they're so afraid of being judged, of being told that they're failing, that they're not doing it right. They're not, you know, carnivore harder (laughs) all the time. And, and you know what, this reminds me of the same mentality of veganism. You know, if we're just going to be um, so hard on each other, just like, you know, the, you know, other people, plant-based people, like we're no better, you Mm -mm. know, Uh, we need to be supporting people in their journeys. What works for me is not going to work for you. You know, we're all different. Exactly. And it's been, it's been amazing to do this as a mom and as a wife to see that, you know, of course I make dinner, I make lunch, I make breakfast. Everyone eats the same thing. And yet each child ends up needing their own form of this low carb diet. And I'll be honest with you, my littler kids, most of my older kids are all grown and gone at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, but the little kids need their own things. Yeah. And they are lower carb. I do allow them right now um, things like rice. I mm-hmm. think it's the lesser of a lot of the evils. <laughs> yeah. But with this many kids and animals, I can't afford to feed everybody, you know, meat and cheese and eggs only. I just can't. And I've got a couple who, if that's all there is to eat, they won't eat. They just period will not eat for days because their bodies, just like mine, will not let them eat the food. They'll be trying to eat it and they'll start gagging at the table. So with my kids, my younger ones, they get to have rice. They get to have, you know, one serving of rice every day, half cup. That's it. We measure it out. They get one apple or one orange or one serving of berries, little things like that. But there's one kid, this poor kid. Oh, my stepson, he can't have bananas. They make him throw up anywhere from 48 to 72 hours later. Uh He can't have green beans. They'll make him throw up within six hours. He can't have hardly, like there's so many things that he can't have. And he watches his sisters eat these things. And so we try to find what they can have. My kids get Lily's chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. They get to have electrolyte drinks. They get to have fun things as well. And we'll make keto chow donuts and things like that so that they can still enjoy being a kid. 